Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. So glad you're tuning in to another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Just honored to have our audience checking us out. Yes. Sweetheart, we got a great one today. I hope you're excited about I it. Am. Today's segment is called Renouncing Pride. I believe it might be one of the most important segments that we've ever mm -hmm. done because pride kills and pride is so normal in our culture mm -hmm. today. And today we're going to give people some life-giving content that I believe is going to cause healing and relationships and in all kinds of areas of our lives. Mm. But let me just start off by saying I love you in green. I love oh. it. It's bringing out the Thank your you. eyes and your hair, your glowing. I love green. It's my favorite color. And green is like the it color this season right now, I think. It's like everywhere. So I'm buying all the green stuff. Yeah. I got questions, but I don't have time. <laughs> I was going to ask you why is green your favorite color? Any very quickly, any reason why? Um, I I think I like nature. Uh -huh. I like trees and plants and flowers, and I think it just reminds me of nature. You are you're such a natural girl. Well, anyway, um, today's going to be good. Um, I just want to welcome everybody once again. If you're newer to our podcast, hit the subscribe button. You can be the first to grab the content when it comes out every Thursday at 3 p.m. Um, this is called Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha because we want to share with you our good, our bad, our ugly, everything in between. And hopefully you will use this content to grow closer to God and also closer to the people that God has placed Absolutely. in your life. And I want to take a moment and invite everybody out to a live conference. A we live have this conference. once a year mega conference mm -hmm. that we do here at a live church called a live conference it's the second week of october and if you need a reason to come to um to orlando it's not just for mickey you can check them out when you're here it's not just to go to the amusement parks and universal studios and sea world and get shopping in you can do all of that we got great food great entertainment here but you should put some jesus on it put some spiritual reasons as well to come to orlando if you've never been to orlando you want to come to a live conference we have seven sessions this year main sessions six master classes talking about singlehood, marriage, um, deliverance, freedom, activating your prophetic gifts. Um, we're having three after parties because you know we got to turn up and Come have on. fun. But more importantly, we're having one encounter with God. And this is what we say, that these three days could change the next 30 years of your life. If you want more information, go to our website at mylifechurch.org. There should be some information about that in our show notes. And get your ticket before they're sold out this year. We hope to see you here in Orlando. It's going to be fun. Amen. All right. So today's segment is entitled Renouncing Pride. Renouncing mm, Pride. Renouncing. That's a big word. This might be one of the most important episodes that we've ever done. Why do you think I say that? Ooh, <clears throat> I mean, pride comes before the fall. Uh huh. So. And what does that mean? It means that oftentimes if there's going to be destruction, uh -huh. I think the Bible says also like pride comes before destruction, mm -hmm. like whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your finances, mm -hmm. whether it's on your job, whether yeah. it's with your children or yeah. any other relationship, mm -hmm. oftentimes pride is mm -hmm. going to be the root of it. Pride is the forerunner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I heard this saying years ago, pride is like bad breath. Everybody knows you have it, but Ooh. you and I think there are people who are watching and listening that will say, well, this ain't got nothing to do with me, but it has everything to do with mm. you. It has everything to do with us. It is the, the reason that Satan was kicked out of heaven or Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. Pride is all sin can pride. have its root in pride. It's all been pride, 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 yeah. pride, pride. We have all these pride movements and all of it really is the exact opposite of what the kingdom of God tells us to exemplify. Mm. And so. Well, you know, by the end of the podcast, hopefully you said that pride is like stinky breath. Everybody knows you have it, but you. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, most of the time if I have stinky breath, I know it. <laughs> so I want to get you to the point. And I try to teach this to the kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> dude. Be aware, be aware of the taste in yeah, your yeah, mouth. Me too. You know what I mean? We want to get you to the point <laughs> right, where right. you yourself will identify, <laughs> right. mm, something ain't right here. Yeah. Let me adjust. Right, right. Yeah, I'm I'm bad breath conscious all the time. And anybody <laughs> who's with me, I'm always like, do you have a mint? Do you have a Listerine? Right. Do you have a mint? Because I just don't want to, you know, in my profession, we talk to people all the time. I don't want to be praying for you. And I think I'm praying exactly. something deep. And you're like, Lord, let this man stop praying. <laughs> That ain't what we want. But anyway, pride is destroying relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, it's killing marriages. It's ending lifelong mm -hmm. um, covenant relationships. Um, it's really um, causing people to walk away from their Bibles, mm -hmm. causing people to walk 
away from God, away from Christianity, the root of it all is pride. Yeah. I think I know better than God. I know the Bible says that. I don't believe in that no more. Mm -hmm. It's all rooted in the spirit of pride. Come on, somebody. Wow. And I want to start a humility movement. Mm. I believe today, praise God, that if you desire, we desire that we can start a humility movement. Mm -hmm. And this is what I know about humility is that God will always honor those who go low mm -hmm. and he will always bring down those who go high. So if you decide to get prideful, you will either humble yourself or be humbled. Mm -hmm. But if you can get low and become a servant and you can be humble, God will always lift you up at the right time in the right way. Mm. It's the benefits of humility. Anything stick wow. out to you? No, I do. I, th I think, you know, humility is something that um, I don't know. I don't feel like we hear that word very often. Yeah. Humility movement. Let's start it right here, right now. You know, um, it's a lot better than a pride movement. And what does that mean to be humble? You know, like, I don't even know if mm. there's, if we see a lot, if you look out in the world today, for examples, mm -hmm. I don't know if we see a lot of examples of humility, meaning that people are fighting in politics and right. fighting, mm. you know, over all of these social issues. And there's a lot of pride, yeah. you know, in that no one's being humble and mm -hmm. saying, well, let me listen to your side or let me, you know, like no, no one's doing that. Um, I'm going to define a little bit later, but I want to jump into this scripture in Deuteronomy 8 because it kind of shows us in Deuteronomy 8. And I'm going to read it, and I want you to tell uh -huh. me what you get out of it. Are you ready? Let's go. It says, um, verse number 6, Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flows out of the valley and hill, hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land that he's given you. But then it says in verse 11, beware that you don't forget the Lord your God by mm -hmm. not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you this day, lest when you've eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwelled in them. Mm -hmm. And when your herds and your flocks are multiplied, when you got the car, you got your SUV, you got your jet skis, your silver and gold are multiplied, your 401k is tight, you got your investment properties, all that you have is multiplied. And when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and who you used to be, I'm adding that, for the house of bondage who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions, in a thirsty land where there was no water, who brought you water out of a flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers, they didn't even know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do you good in the end. And then you say in your heart, my power mm. and the might of my hand has gained me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant as he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Mm. Ooh, that's a lot. Um, for those of you all who are newer, check out Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6 through 18. That's what I read. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lot in this one, y'all. What do you get out of it? Ooh, it's almost like uh, God has given you this warning. Like it said there, this is your warning to mm -hmm. every person because we all have goals. Mm -hmm. We all have dreams. You know, we want to graduate high school, go to college, get our careers. Then there's more goals and all of this stuff with families and things. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, I want you to prosper. I am empowering you to prosper mm -hmm. in everything. Mm -hmm. But when you get there, you will be tempted mm -hmm. With the thought of, look what I did right. and look what I've become. <laughs> but when you get that thought, because you will, mm -hmm. because I will do what I said, I'm going to prosper you and mm -hmm. you're going to get the thought. But when you get it, mm -hmm. be sure to remember, yeah. I am the God yeah. who caused all of this to happen. Pride makes you forget who your source actually is. Mm. Pride makes you think that you did it because you was on your grind you went to school, you were born in this family, you made that investment, not knowing that God gave you the breath, he gave you his grace and his mercy, and the only reason that you have that education and that skill set is because of the grace mm. of a God that made you that way. And so what pride does is causes you to become absent-minded and take the glory from God instead of give it to mm. him. There's so much in this chapter. Anything else? 
Uh, no, I'm just reminded of, I don't know if, I know you've never had a dog, but there's a saying that says, don't bite the hand it feeds you. Uh -huh. You know, I've had dogs before and uh -huh. it's like, you know, you, you put, you're putting the food in the bowl and they get like, you know, too excited or whatever, or they want to, you know, rebel uh -huh. and kind of bite you. You don't give, they don't get any more food to eat. And right. I'm just reminded, like, don't bite. We always have to remember God is the one who's feeding us. Yeah. He is our source. He is our supply. Yeah. It takes a humble person to acknowledge that. But I want to do some a quick um, look at the book of mm -hmm. Deuteronomy. You know, mm -hmm. the book of Deuteronomy is written by Moses. The time is about 4, 1406 B.C. And the audience that Moses in Deuteronomy is directly speaking to is the children of Israel. They have, in the book of Deuteronomy, already wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we're coming to the end of this 40-year journey. They know that Canaan is in their future. God has promised the Israelites a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. No more scarcity, no more lack, a land where there is an abundance. Mm -hmm. And so they're coming to the end of this and they know that that's the next step. And so they're basically coming into a season of success. And for me, chapter eight is a chapter about how you handle success. Come on. And so what God begins to lay out through Moses is like, listen, um, when you come into the land, it's going to be flowing with milk and honey. You're going to have, when you build your houses, when you got your flocks and your herds, your silver, your gold is multiplied, your business is doing well, you're starting up offices around the nation, you close that contract. Hold up. You're in a successful place. Don't forget the Lord thy God, for it is he who's given you power. Yes. That word power means the ability. He's given you the grace to be able to produce what you're producing. So for me, chapter eight is so settling because it's teaching us how to handle success mm -hmm. so that when we get something, it doesn't cause us to rebel against God and the position spiritually will be worse than even when we started. Mm. Now, so Deuteronomy is like, for me, the rallying call of a head coach. And it's a head coach that will not see the championship. He's built this entire team. He's led them 40 years and he dies at the end of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. So Deuteronomy is all about Moses leaving wisdom nuggets for the next generation. This is what I've seen. Don't let it mess you up. Yes. Don't worship the gold. Don't turn. Don't make it an idol. Don't don't put anything before God. Basically, Moses is saying, listen, I've been with God for a while. I've seen what we've done in the wilderness. So I'm going to leave you some instructions. And he begins to talk about God dependency. And he talks about um, overcoming idolatry. But the biggest one that I see here in Deuteronomy 8 he gives us a warning against pride. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy 8.13, it says, And when your herds and flocks grow large, your silver and gold increase, and all that you have is multiplied, and your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who mm -hmm. brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. So what he's doing in the center of chapter number 8, he's teaching us how to handle success, and he says, Don't let pride get the best of you. What do you take out of well, it? It's <laughs> almost like, you know, as a believer, I want to hold on to the promises of God uh -huh. when I am so much increase and when I'm increased, when my bank accounts are full, like all of that you just read. Yes, those are the promises of God. I receive the promises of God. Mm -hmm. But when you receive the promises of God, mm -hmm. There's a 50-50 chance, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got a, a yes and a no, mm -hmm. or whether you are going to allow pride mm -hmm. to rise up, mm -hmm. whether you're going to say, I did this mm -hmm. or God did this. Yeah. And we have to understand that, mm -hmm. that whenever we receive the blessings of God, the test is coming mm -hmm. in that. You know what else I heard in that mm -hmm. um, is how Moses is leaving wisdom for the generations. Mm -hmm. And what I've seen is that sometimes, and even people who believe mm -hmm. Um, that, you know, God brought them to a certain level, mm -hmm. but they get to a level and they don't teach those principles to their children. Right. Their children think, oh, my mom and dad are successful because they worked so hard mm -hmm. and they did this and they have an education. Mm -hmm. And some of that, like, okay, yeah, yeah, we get that. But yeah. without God, right. it wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be what you are. But we are not giving those mm -hmm. wisdom keys to our children to say, no, I know I worked for this, but without God, I would not be where I am now. And that's what we need to teach our children. Yeah. For me right now, I think if you were to say, what is the biggest thing you're working on in your life or mm -hmm. what is your big goal right now? It's to be humble. Mm -hmm. It's to have a humble heart to keep myself low in the midst of success, yeah. in the midst of platform is that I want to go lower. Mm -hmm. I want to be more humble. I want to be more of a servant because I understand that pride cometh before the fall. Mm -hmm. And if you really begin to, and I've been studying about humility, I've spent days really mm -hmm. just looking at the spirit of pride and how it's operating. And um, that's just the goal of my heart right now. Wow. And my hope is that we can impart that onto our audience because 
I talk to successful people. Um, right now I have people who are calling me that are very well known. I'm not going to be name dropping, but what I'm saying is that if I said their name, you would know who they are. And so one of the things that I want my successful, well-to-do athletes, influencers, and entrepreneurs know is you got to get low because yeah. what you got, as fast as it came to you, it can also be taken away from yeah. you. Yeah. And so we got to really, it's not, you know, it's nothing pride. to be afraid and like, you know, it's no like doom and gloom or whatever, but it's just, you reap what you sow. I don't know if that even need to be said because you know what I mean? Yeah. I like, mean, but people, sometimes people get so spooky and like, Ooh, you know, but no. <laughs> like spooky because it can be taken away from you. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. It can be. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. what you have, it can be gone. If the grace of God, if there's Ichabod, the presence of God leaves your life and God decides not to put a hedge of protection around you, it can be gone. And people need to know that. I don't think that's a fear tactic. That's Come just on. like what we see. I yeah. can go through famous preachers. I can go through people who've lost their churches. Mm -hmm. I can go back through the 80s and look at some of the people who, man, was preaching around the world. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That did sentences just because wow. they allowed pride to come into their ministry. Yeah. I can go back through athletes, people that we even know. I mean, this is not hidden stuff. Yeah. Tiger Woods, different people at the top of their game, and then pride come in, and they have a relationship over here or something inappropriate over here, mm -hmm. lose endorsements, lose money, lose millions of dollars, all this kind of stuff because it's so pride true. comes before the fall. And, it's coming. And I think what happens <laughs> is those who operate in pride, and not that I've never operated in pride, is that, but what we've seen is that you can, God will give you a space mm -hmm and grace mm -hmm. to make the right decision. Yeah. And sometimes you can go week after week and month, month after month or year after year uh -huh. and never pay the price Ooh. for the sin or the pride. And you think everything's okay, but when the fall comes, it oh, comes and it's this, not good. This segment needs to be three parts long. I don't even know how I'm going to get it all out. We'll do the best that we can. Um, do you consider yourself a prideful person? <laughs> Why? Um, I don't consider okay. myself a prideful person, Why is but that? I do recognize that there are, t I do know that pride rises up sometimes. Is that, isn't that a hard question to answer? It like, is. Like for you to say, no, I'm not prideful seems like a prideful statement. That's not what I'm saying. Let me just tell you as a person yeah. that lives with you, yeah. you're not a prideful person. You're not a prideful person. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. But all of us can be tempted with pride. Do you, right. Am I a prideful person? No. Probably maybe more than you're you. more way more than me. OK, but no, I don't I, I, think you I are. don't know why that is, though. Can you break that down real quick? Like, um, I think it's different personality types. Uh -huh. So, for example, one of, um, you know, for me and my background and everything, I'm more on the side of I have to stop myself from tearing myself down. You uh -huh. know, like you're so dumb, I like so hard on myself. And I'm trying to be this perfectionist kind of personality where I have to constantly build myself up. No, no, girl, we're not going to do that today. And so that would be. But for for you, I think you have this gift of mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. Like you have a David, I'm going to throw this stone at the giant mm -hmm. and that kind of confidence mm -hmm. that is, you know, God breathed mm -hmm. in, into you. Mm -hmm. And that confidence, sometimes you can be so overly confident in yourself or in the gifts that God's given you that it's just like, it can be prideful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference there. Um, I think it's important to say that when you have confidence, that's not necessarily not, pride. Right. Yeah. Because I think that a lot of people have false humility because I'm just, I'm just a worm and God, please yeah, look on this wretched that's sinner. That's prideful. That You're a child of God. Put, <laughs> put, put your chest out there. Yeah. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I can't do nothing without him, but I can do all things through yes. Christ. So there is a biblical godly confidence and boldness that we or need. You don't, but Paul said, I don't boast in myself, but in Christ in me. Yeah, but there's a line that you can mm -hmm. go over to where it's more confidence in mm -hmm. your ability. Yeah. We can kind of unpack that later. Um, how would you define pride? Um, I would say, how would I define pride? I would say, I guess a belief that I am the source of wow. my accomplishments or the source mm. of my success mm. or the source of my goodness. <laughs> that was good off the top. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a classical okay, definition. Okay, what's the classic definition? An inordinate self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority and mm. talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishment, rank, elevation, and office, which manifest itself in lofty airs, mm. distance, reserve, and often in the contempt of others. So I would put pride synonymous, synonymous with boastfulness, um, haughtiness, mm -hmm. arrogance, superiority. Um, simply put, pride is lifting up self while putting down others. 
It's mm-hmm. thinking too much of self and little of God and little of others. Mm-hmm. They say that all sin, and I don't, I don't, this is subjective, so I don't think we can prove it, but I think it's pretty accurate just from experience that all sin has its root in pride. You mm-hmm. think that's true? I mean, I can see it, you know, when we talk about Lucifer and his like, I don't know the or, I don't know if that was the original sin or whatever. But, um, you know, when we look in the Bible, mm-hmm. the first thought of sin, the first sign of sin that we see is Lucifer, who said, I will make myself like God. Yeah, and Isaiah, I will, you know, and so and that's I will pride. I will right. This, I will that. Uh-huh. And so I, it seems like it's, it, you know, I don't know if it's 100 percent. Well, true, I, but well it seems to me, like let's look at sin. Be. Mm-hmm. Um, adultery. Um, so you're stepping outside of your marriage and you're having um, sex with someone who you're not in covenant with because, okay, let's think about lying. Let's mm-hmm. think about stealing. Let's think about jealousy. Because the focus is all on I. I lie for my <laughs> sake. I lie. I, I, I'm well, I lie because, because I want to make myself. Feel like it. I lied because I want to make myself look something different than where I am or I want to get the advantage of someone mm. else. Um, I stepped out and was unfaithful because I believe, see, uh, the reason that all sin has its root in pride is because you're basically saying your way is better than God's. Mm. It doesn't matter what we go through, you, adultery, jealousy, gossip, murmuring, complaining. If you say that I'm going to do this, which is sin, basically you're saying that God said this, but I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. The root of that is pride. You're saying that your way, mm-hmm. what you think about your sexuality, right. what you think about how to manage your money, what you think about the Sabbath, it doesn't matter what God says because I know better and I'm going to enjoy myself doing this way. Mm-hmm. The root of that is rooted in pride. Wow. So all sin has its root in pride. So I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> that even even people who say, well, I don't believe, you know, I don't believe the Bible or I only believe this part of the Bible or I, you know, it's all it, it's it right there. It's just, mm-hmm. you so know, it's you have, written, you but you don't believe what's written. And a scientist, um, and there's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. science. There's biblical great science. Um, great science will confirm the Bible. Mm-hmm. But you're saying that you have more confidence. Like someone, we posted a clip that we did about Adam and Eve and somebody commented, oh, here we go. Still believing in Adam and Eve. So what do you believe? Oh, that we wow. exploded and came from apes? And chimpanzees and tadpoles, you think that... And that makes more sense yeah, than you, that, that there's somebody listen, who created all of it this? It takes more faith to believe that we all came from chimpanzees and we right. still got chimpanzees than we do that God created Adam and Eve in his image and in his likeness. Right. But pride will block you to the revelation of God mm. and will cause you to depend upon your stats, logic, and philosophies. It's all pride. And so anyway, let's get practical, okay? Pride is... Here's some practical things. Okay. When you're going through something and you don't want anybody else to know, mm-hmm. it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to put my business in the street. What do you mean? You don't want to go in for counseling? You don't want successful other people to speak into what you're doing? Yeah. That's pride. That's funny. Stop me whenever you're ready. That's funny to me. When, when you refuse to get help for your problems because you don't want people to look at you a certain way. Well, mm-hmm. you know, especially in the church world, it's like, well, I just don't want them to look at me a certain way. I think we have to die to our reputation. Yeah. That's one thing that I've been praying a lot of God. Um, I, cause Jesus, he, he lived a life that wasn't based upon his reputation. Mm-hmm. Now I believe there is a promise for us to have a good name over in Proverbs, but I don't want to live my life for what people think about me. I want to live my life for an audience of one. Yeah. So if I'm going through a struggle, let's say that there's a pornography addiction and I keep it to myself because mm-hmm. I don't want to tell, I don't want them to look at me. That's pride. Mm-hmm. Cause you don't want people to know who you really are. And yeah. that's why you can't get no help. Wow. When you feel a certain way about another person's promotion, and you think of how better you are than them. I think this happens a lot in comparison. I can see that happening a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, like somebody got married before you got married. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how they get married? I know how they act. Or they get a job. You're like, I can't believe they got a job and I'm still searching. And you almost like bring them down mm-hmm. so you can push yourself well, higher. I think the enemy will trick us because nowadays we'll say, well, that's comparison because we're looking at social media and we compare ourselves to mm-hmm. somebody else. And it's under the guise of comparison where we feel bad because we're looking, we're comparing ourselves to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And that really happens. But I think some of that is pride where we are say, no, we feel bad or we don't feel bad because we're, com- you know, we think they're better. We think we are better than them. Mm-hmm. And we're upset because we think we should have what they have. And we don't, oh. you know, I wish I, there's a scripture. I think it's in Philippians. It says to prefer others more than you do yourself. Yeah. What it means is that it's okay that everybody's better than you. Yeah. Because if everybody's better than me, that does not lessen who I am. Mm-hmm. 
because you being worse or better than me does not move my position and who I am. Exactly. And so if you take the mindset that everybody's better than me, but that doesn't mean that I'm not great. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm not God's chosen. It doesn't mean that I'm not favored, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with preferring other people because I know God's preferring me. Mm -hmm. It's just so opposite of what's going, you know, it's the common so mindset, but yeah. so good. Here's another one, practical pride point. Uh, when you look down on somebody because of their race, their dress, or the way they live, mm -hmm. that's prideful. Mm -hmm. So if you're driving and you see somebody homeless and your thought is, man, won't they just get a job? Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to give them money because they're just going to use it on drugs. Mm -hmm. That's a so, big that's a big brush that you paint it so with. There. Some people can call that being judgmental mm -hmm. or judging a book by its cover, but uh, that's really pride. If it, you get to the root be. of it, it's pride because yeah. you just think that you're you're. Well, you know how we do. We sometimes we put it under prudence. When I'm just being wise, I don't want them to mm -hmm. go out and buy more drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying give them a hundred dollars. I mean, but you mm -hmm. know, I'm not I'm, I'm not even saying what to do. But I'm just saying that I, I think the superiority. Mm -hmm feel of that is the pride for peace. And so when whites think they're better than blacks or when blacks think they're better than whites mm -hmm. or when browns think they're better than reds, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, you know, I can't stand race. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not God made us man-made. Um, or when the, um, the, 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 the Israelites think they're better than the Palestinians mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. I mean, go through whatever people group. It's almost right. like I'm looking down on you mm -hmm. because you don't have the money that I have or the car that I have, or you're not my skin tone. Mm -hmm. That, in a, of its nature is pride mm -hmm. because it's putting you up and somebody else down. Wow. So evolution is a racist theory that is rooted in the spirit of pride. Mm. Evolution says the lighter your skin is, mm -hmm. the higher you are up the evolutionary chain. And it's amazing to me that people are teaching a racist theory still in public schools today. They should mark it all out and just say, we don't know. Because if you don't want to believe in God, just say, we don't right. know. Don't go up, make up Well, they stuff. don't put that in the textbooks. They <laughs> right. put the, you know, they, well, they take, they extract the racism from the textbook right. and they put, you know, they leave everything else and everybody's believing all of this. Well, the reason that most people, because they have not went, because if you go to even like Darwin's mm -hmm. original writings mm -hmm. for Darwinism, it was called um, kind of like. Um, the study of preferred races. Preferred, yeah. That's actually the title of Darwinism. And so mm -hmm. when people, you know, which basically is like giving birth to evolution. And so the, basically the theory is racist because mm -hmm. it's saying that if you're darker skin, you have not evolved. So I'm better than you. And we need to take that and we need to throw that crap out because it's all coming from the spirit of pride who is mm -hmm. Satan himself. And I mean, I can go through a bunch of practical stuff. Um, prideful people are easily offended. Think mm -hmm. about when people get offended. Yeah. And like you say something, oh, who you think you are to talk to me that way? Yeah. Or why didn't they include me in this? Mm -hmm. And I, I, this person, even in the church world, mm -hmm. I had a pastor tell me the other day that somebody came up to him and was like, um, well, I just had a problem with you. <laughs> and it was something crazy that uh -huh. he didn't he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And that offense, the root of offense is pride. Mm -hmm. You got your feelings hurt. Right. Somebody didn't call you back. Somebody didn't acknowledge you. But I thought you were a servant. I thought you were... I thought you were low, but when that offense rises up, yeah. under that offense is the spirit of pride. But what you're doing is like you're, you, I can't like you're talking about being judgmental, mm -hmm. you know, having hints of racism, discrimination, pride. you know, this, 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 um, you know, uh, offense. Mm -hmm. um, they're all rooted in pride, really. And I'm reminded, like, I was at the grocery store. I got to tell you, I had a moment in pride, and it's so funny we're talking about this because I was, <laughs> I think it was like the day before yesterday. I was in a grocery store, mm -hmm. and I was looking, you know, mm -hmm. at an aisle, and a lady came up, and it's like the the I would consider the the polite thing to do is you say excuse me as you're walking by because you just walked in front of my face, you know, whatever. It's the polite thing to do. You mm -hmm. say excuse me. And so the lady walks by and for whatever reason, I was offended. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I started being like, hmm, well, that was rude. Mm -hmm. Well, who does she think she is? What do I look like? I'm looking at my clothes. Like, am I dressed like, you know, a bum or something? Like she just thinks she could disrespect me and walk in front of me, like whatever. Mm -hmm. So I like, you know, it was like a good 30 seconds. I'm like going there in my brain. But I know enough to be like, OK, girl, stop it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, as soon as like I calmed down and I was like, OK, Lord, I probably prayed or did something like that and just walked walked over and started smiling at these other people. Cause I was like, girl, just I had to do something to like, sow good seed, you know? So I just started smiling and talking to other people. Well, then I noticed that the lady that walked in front of me, she starts yelling out loud, but it's in a different language. Mm -hmm. 
she's staring at the um, food in front of her and she's yelling at the person like in the next row, like da 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 da. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this lady's yelling in the grocery store. And it was just like, it was just normal for her, but she was speaking another language. And when I realized, Tabitha, you were acting like, an idiot, you know, being offended at this woman who doesn't know your culture. She doesn't even know it's, you know, that's the thing you do. You say, excuse me, or might not even know the English word, you know what I mean, to do whatever. But she's not trying to hurt you. She's minding her business. She's screaming at the other aisle, you know, on down. I mean, this is crazy. So anyway, immediately I was confronted with my own pride in that moment. And I was like, girl, you need to get it together. And I love it that you um, realized it. Yeah. And then you were quick to turn from it. But those are little things we do in life. Oh man, I think there's people But you got to check those pride. things cuz yeah. they'll build up. I think there's people walking in pride that have no clue that they're walking in pride and mm -hmm. they just do that kind of stuff all the time and mm -hmm. and pride has now become their norm. Yeah. And we need to develop a new norm. I mean, I got a bunch of practical things. People who don't lift their hands in worship. Uh -huh. A lot of times that's just pride. Mm. I'm just uncomfortable. I remember when I first came to a church and people was lifting their hands, I would just stand there. It was so uncomfortable mm. for me. Why? Because it just, I didn't want people to look at me. It just felt weird. And what I realized is that I wasn't humble enough towards God Amen. and I wasn't reverent enough towards God because to, to surrender to him. So yeah. I wanted to be in control. And I don't want to be lifting my hands up in here. I, I want to be in control because I, that, that's pride. Right. I mean, I, I got so many of these. You know, people don't have any real accountability. I'm a grown man. I put my pants on one leg at a time like, mm -hmm. you, well, I'm a grown man, but I got a grown man who has overseers. I got grown man who has mentorship and pastoring. I'm a grown man with a board of directors. I'm a grown man that I about don't make a decision before I ask you because I know that in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. safety. And there are some people that are the lone rangers. You mm. cannot speak into their life. If you try to correct them, if you try to say anything to them, you are stepping all over that spirit of pride. Yeah, Cast it up and cast it out in Jesus' mm. name. It's, pride is not attractive. It's not. It's so unattractive. Anyway, in the comments, y'all tell me, what are other practical, prideful mm -hmm. things that people do? Because I can go on and on about that forever. But I mean, because we just had something happen um, with our HOA. Mm -hmm. And um, that oh. was... <laughs> Why did there you was, bring it up? Yeah, there was a pride, and like I had to, I had to back my wife off the ledge because she was ready to blow up the neighborhood. I was she in was all, I was in war mode. Everybody and go crazy on Help me, Lord. HOA, I'm all of the sorry. neighbors. So this is how the story went down, everybody. So um, it's it's like five o'clock. I mean, it's like the middle of the day. Our daughter, she's out running like she does every day. Our daughter has a little Chevrolet cruise. An she's old an amazing daughter too. Amazing. She parked the car in the front of our house. I'm talking about the driveways here. She parked two feet from the driveway right on the corner. And she came out of the door and the car was gone. Mm -hmm. And so I get a call from Tabitha and she's like, somebody stole the car. So I'm like, and I'm in a meeting and I'm having a meeting with an individual and I'm telling them about warfare and ministry and about the way really? of ministry uh -huh. in the <laughs> middle. I get a call and then I turn to the person. I say, see, this is the kind of stuff happening. I'm here. I'm telling you about warfare and somebody stole my, my daughter's car, but I'm not going to let that steal my joy because I'm still going to minister to right, you. We're still right. going to have a great day. But then you call back five minutes later and you said that, no, somebody from the HOA called and they towed our daughter's car from in front of from house. in front of our house. I went upset. I got upset right in the middle of the meeting. I told the person like, yeah, at first it was funny and it was warfare, but now I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, you have these thoughts. I had the thoughts like, why would you tow my car from in front of my house? I pay our HOA $750, $750 a quarter, okay? You're towing my daughter uh, uh, you know, who just turned 18, but I'm thinking like a, a young girl who just graduated high school from in front of my house. I'm upset with the neighbors. I want to know who called. I'm upset I'm, right now. You're all upset over just again. thinking again. Help me, Lord. But I mean, pride came up, man. Pride came up. And so I went home and I was just, I'm driving home and I'm thinking, who called? Who called? Mm -hmm. Who called the tow truck? Right. And um, as I got out of the car, I heard the Holy Spirit say, he says, don't shadow box. Mm. And he says, turn the other cheek and overcome good with evil. I'm stepping out of the car. I hear this. And I go, you still fired up, boy. I walk into the house. She's like, I wrote him a letter. I sent the HOA an email. And here's the email. I mean, I read the email. I put email. the bylaws Listen, in the letter. I read the email. So she went through the bylaws. And we didn't know this. But the bylaw says that we're not supposed to park on the street. We're supposed right. to park in our driveway. But then the bylaw says that 
they have to give you 24 hour notice. 24 hour notice. Before they tow you. Mm -hmm. So it's game on. Y'all didn't give us no notice. You came, took our car, and they took it to the hood. They took it to Junkyard Dog. They took it over to some place. We walked in the place. It offended. looked like one of them planets from Star Wars where everything is just scrap metal everywhere. And a lady is in the gate with, with like this guard on, just like, um, hey, where do we go? And we don't even know where to go. She's, she's talking to us out of a gate. This thing is like crazy. I'm like, I got my sweet daughter with me trying to just get my car back from this expensive neighborhood that we live in because somebody done took my car. No, you came through the gate uh -huh. to my house, okay? There were other cars parked That's on the, the street. That's the thing. There's other and cars parked on the street. you took my car out through my neighborhood, out through the gate again and took it to some hood. <laughs> well, look, look. We love the hood, but I'm just saying. Look. I'm just saying. What pride rose up because that's what today is about because you're getting upset just thinking about it. So pride rose up. And um, so me, after the Lord spoke to me, I felt more calm, but I felt like I had to really work with you for a couple of days it to get did. you not you to did. go crazy and burn the whole neighborhood you did. down. And I got you down. I got you down. You mm -hmm. humbled yourself and you was like, okay, mm -hmm. praise God. We're just going to get the car. We got the car back, paid about $120. You sent them telling them they owe you $120, all that kind of stuff. And they didn't email you back for a few days. And they're supposed to, you they, know, they won't pick up their phone. Their they won't call you back. Their policies within 48 hours, they email you back. They, they, nothing. Radio silence. Then. Four or five days later, send you an email giving you the law of Orlando saying that they have the right to tow anybody that could possibly block emergency vehicles. Now, listen, and I I'm not, sorry. You're <laughs> I did not go to, to law school. OK, but anyone with a high school degree can see basically what they said is, yes, those are our HOA bylaws, but we can do whatever we want to do. So we ain't giving you your so money deal back. With it, is basically what they said. Pride jumped on this woman, <laughs> and she was like, "Who it do was you like, think I am?" I'm it was telling like you, like a monkey listen, jumped on me. And was I'm having like, thoughts. I was. I'm thinking like, y'all need to Google me. You need to Google me. I turn this. I know the mayor. You know I, the kind of influence I have. You know. I'm thinking like, I'm gonna sell this house, and then I'm gonna blast the HOA. I'm gonna let everybody know. Don't you dare come to this neighborhood. It's a gated community, but they ratchet. They don't even call you back. You pay them thousands. I'm having all these thoughts, and then you realize that you're being tempted with pride, just like they were yep. tempted in Deuteronomy 8. Yep. And it's the same spirit. And um, yeah, they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was an injustice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might even have a legal ramification, but I cannot destroy my witness so Come that on. I can win this fight. I got $120. I'm going to pay that money. And what I decided to do, you can tell me what you decided mm -hmm. to do here on International Air. I decided to pray for my, my neighbors every mm -hmm. day. Because I don't know who did it. I don't know if it was an know. HOA thing. I, I don't know. know if it was a neighbor. I don't know. I've been praying for them. The whole neighborhood about to get saved. Yeah, come on. I'm man. praying for the community. The community across the street is getting the overflow of my prayers. This morning, I said, Lord, I thank you that the blindfolds are being lifted. I lift up every Muslim in my neighborhood, every atheist, come every on. agnostic. I thank you that the blindfolds are being lifted off their heart and mind, and they will be born again. You said you give me the heathen as an inheritance. I got on the HOA website, got a picture of the man, and I'm praying for the guy who sent us mm -hmm. the letter. Mm -hmm. God, I thank you, God, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper, that you give him favor with long life. You'll satisfy him yes. he'll be born again filled with the holy spirit they don't mess with mess with the wrong people and i've just decided to overcome evil with good but i guess my point in this long story is that we all can be tempted with yes. pride. yes google me check my resume yeah. who you gonna talk to like that right you don't know me okay let's take it to the street right <laughs> take it to the mattress oh. <laughs> Go to the mattresses. Tell, tell everybody, baby, you feel like you overcame that test yet? I, and, I feel like I'm still, you know, overcoming. Uh -huh. I mean, honestly, because I still feel the emotion of it, like right now, like when you're saying it, I'm not as like radical as I was before, but I still feel like, oh my gosh, let me like, I still need to be praying for people. But I feel like, um, <laughs> I want to talk about, you know, some things that like, that I had to do to like not fight okay. because I wanted to send another letter letter and another you letter and go involved. knock on people's doors yeah. and find out because I felt um, threatened. Um, you, you felt targeted. I felt targeted. You felt discriminated against. Discriminated you against. You felt singled out. And it might not have been what they were trying I to do. It was, 
it but was how are you going to take our car? But there's other yeah. cars on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and it was unfair, you know, and nobody. And I feel like I don't sow those kind of seeds. You yeah. know what I mean? Come knock on my door if you have a problem or, you know, we live in that kind of yeah, community. Don't tell my it's car. Like, just, just call me. Yeah. Just text me. And then I it was my that. daughter's car. So Mama Bear came out and oh, like she Lord. had her ID and her, you know, everything was in the car. So they just took it. And I called the car lot. And like I was just. It, it was just horrible all around. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, I had to uh, really, this is what I did. So when you showed me the person, mm -hmm. um, you showed me his picture, mm -hmm. the, who the HOA, the guy who was responding to my letters. Mm -hmm. And then you showed me the other lady who receives all the letters and like, these are just regular people, okay? Mm -hmm. They got a job. They're trying to keep their job. Mm -hmm. Heaven knows, like they probably get cussed out on a daily basis because mm -hmm. I'm not even, you know, my letter was polite, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it was pointed, but it was polite. Right. And um, I can't even imagine, you know, what they what they have to deal with on their job. I would not want their job. Um, and so when I put a face to the person, it's like you said, God said, don't shadow box. Yeah. At first, I felt threatened because it was just like this invisible, like, who did this? Mm -hmm. Who do I need to fight? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like, you know, I needed to defend myself and protect myself. But I started to just, okay, I don't need to offend, to defend my God. God is my defender. Yeah. He's my protector. He's yeah. my provider. He will make my name great. I don't have to exalt myself. God will exalt me. All of those things. And actually, I came down like 10 notches. Maybe yesterday or the day before yesterday, I was studying the scripture. And I don't know, it might have been in Mark. I think maybe I was in, I can't remember where I was, but I was reading about Jesus um, and on his way to the cross when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. And um, he was asking the disciples to pray for, you know, to pray with him and stay up, whatever the disciples wouldn't stay up. He had the, ch the chance to be offended, all of this stuff. But finally, um, when Judas comes and kisses him on the cheeks, he, he turns to this like army of people around him. He's like, you, you came with me with an army and like clubs and stuff. What do, you know, why do you do this? I was in the synagogues preaching. You could have just took me at any time. Why are you here with an army? Like, you know, what is this? And for me, God showed me in that moment, I mean, Jesus had the chance to be offended. Like, if you're going to be offended, mm -hmm. be offended because they, they called an army to come out after one man. But it just showed me in that moment through the scripture, and God can highlight different things at different times, that I was feeling like that. Mm -hmm. I was feeling attacked. Mm -hmm. I was feeling like there was an army after. I don't know who it was, mm -hmm. but I know that if Jesus could lay down a fence... Mm -hmm and lay down pride. Don't you know who I am? I am the son, son of God. God. I can call, call down, down angels fire. right yeah. now. You know, like if he could lay all that down, wow. I can surely lay down this little thing Ooh. with an HOA and some guy just trying to do his job. And it really broke, just spoke to my heart a different way. The scripture says that Jesus, even though he was equal with God, he, he emptied out himself. Mm -hmm. I can't think of exactly how it goes, but basically he emptied out himself. Yeah. And he basically took upon no reputation at all. He is the epitome of humility. Yeah. So what that was was a trigger for mm -hmm. you. It was a trigger. And they triggered you. They stole something from you. It was an injustice. And then it triggered all these other emotions. And I think that our audience needs to really know what their triggers are. Mm -hmm. And when you're triggered, slow down for a moment and yes. realize you're feeling this and it's real to you but it doesn't mean that it's really real. Right. And so you got to figure out how to deal with the things that you're being triggered with. Mm -hmm. But um, I do want to drop what humility is because humility is a modest or low view of one's own importance. Mm -hmm. It's lowliness of mind. And the epitome of the example of humility would be Jesus, mm -hmm. who was a king in glory, but took upon flesh and went to the cross despite the shame. Mm -hmm. Crucifixion was shameful. You know, crucifixion was humiliating. Mm -hmm. He took all our shame so we wouldn't have to have it ourselves. And so Jesus is the example setter of humility. Proverbs 22, verse 4, it says, True humility and the fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. Wow. Um, I would love to know what, what, what sticks out to you. I'll go through a few things. Mm -hmm. But for me, we all want riches, honor, mm -hmm. and long life. Not all. Maybe some people don't. But I look at that as a promise from God. So yes. I'll, I'll take it. Yes. Riches honor, long life. But the Bible says that the forerunner is true humility and the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So to me, the reason that I reverence God, which is the fear of the Lord, is because I'm humble. Mm -hmm. And if I do not reverence God, it's because I don't have enough humility. 
for example, I reverence the Bible. Don't tear up a Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, true humility and the fear of the Lord and a reverence. I have a reverence for the Sabbath day or the house of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to act crazy, but come to church and try to put myself together. And I want to humble myself to know that there's a God that's bigger than me. And those things lead to riches, honor, and long life. Riches, honor, and long life. Proverbs 11 and 12 says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Mm. And so pride is going to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pride came your way. Pride's going to come my way. Pride's going to come your way. The question is, what do you do with pride when it comes? And so it says, when pride comes, Mm -hmm. then comes disgrace. And that's what I said. I've seen a lot of men of God be disgraced. Yeah. They've lost their churches. They've lost their oil. They've lost their influence. They've lost because they got so big that they didn't realize they still need to be low. Wow. And I just think that in this season of God increasing and blessing, the biggest thing on my mind is humility. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that I'm sharing with other influencers and people that I mentor is Mm -hmm. like humility. And because if you do pride, when pride comes, you're about to be disgraced. And we see people's spouses leave them. We see people's churches fall apart. We see people go into bankruptcy. We see people who were billionaires lose all the money, lose stocks, all kinds of stuff. Because when pride comes, disgrace is right around the corner. You, you know, um, you talked about pride and wisdom mm-hmm. and um, humility and wisdom. Mm-hmm. And um, what I noticed, like with this HOA example, because um, I spent a lot of time with myself because I was really upset over this. Mm-hmm. And I did. I, I, I had to take it to the Lord and I had to say, OK, this was a trigger for me. Mm-hmm. How am I going to deal with this? You know, what am I going to how am I going to overcome? But what I noticed is that when I was operating in pride and I was so angry yeah. and I'm literally I would go outside the house and I got the cell phone and I'm taking, I'm recording all of the other cars that are parked on the street, <laughs> yeah, me too. you know, mm-hmm. like, so while I was operating in pride, I realized it was noisy in my mind. There was a whole lot of noise, like um, accusations going on, a, lo- a whole lot of thoughts of the enemy. Who do they think they are? Da, 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 all of this stuff. But when I shut up the voice of pride and just became quiet and started meditating on the word of God, mm-hmm. um, I noticed it became really quiet. And that's when I started to hear wisdom, Mm. the voice of wisdom. And Proverbs also says that wisdom cries out. And sometimes when we're operating in pride, it can get so noisy and we're overcome. And that's why we act out and we do irrational things and crazy things because pride is telling us, just smack them in the face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just tell them to shut up. Just cuss them out real good right now. You know, that's pride screaming at us. But we can focus on God. Okay, what would Jesus do? What did Jesus do when they surrounded him like an army? Uh All of that shuts up Mm -hmm. and the voice of wisdom can be heard. I think if we can just listen to that voice of wisdom, we'll make better decisions. Man, this is so good. I love this podcast. I really do. Um, I feel like there. this is a word for married people. You know, our podcast is for married people, single people, whoever you are, but we love to kind of really speak into relationships and marriages. Marriages And I think that there's a lot of women who Mm -hmm. are in pride. Mm -hmm. And before you get upset, because that would be pride, there's a lot of men who are in pride. A lot of husbands are in pride and won't listen to your wife won't serve her, won't submit to her. She can't even speak to anything. You give her like $10 while you go out and buy whatever you want to, and it's just a bunch of pride. Mm -hmm. You have incorrectly concluded some things in the Bible without really understanding the spirit in which it's been said, and you've put yourself on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And headship and leadership is really servant leadership, and Jesus showed us that by washing his disciples' feet. In the position of authority, the man of God, Emmanuel, God with us, still taking a low position. And that's how husbands ought to be. Mm. And that's how wives ought to be. And there's some wives you're filled with pride. You don't listen to anything he has to say. You are hard to lead. You nag, you attack, you bark all the time. You treat him like a child. And it's all pride. Mm-hmm. And if we can renounce pride, we're going to see some marriages be restored. I'll give you wow. one more scripture. Psalms 115. In one, it says, not unto us, Lord, not unto us, but to your name be the glory Mm. because of your love and faithfulness. And you say, Ken, what is the answer to pride? I think renouncing it and then just making a decision that I'm going to give God glory for everything. Mm -hmm. It says not unto us, not unto us, O Lord, but to your name be all the glory. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I'm living a life to give God glory. Amen. I want our marriage to give him glory. I want our children to give him glory. I want our church to give him glory. I want to glorify God with my money. I want to glorify God with what I do when nobody else is around. I want to live a life to give him glory. And I think that many times pride causes you to want to take the glory for yourself. Mm -hmm. But 
the essence of humility is like, yes, I've accomplished great things. I built the houses in Deuteronomy 8. I got the, the vehicles. I got the success. I got the corner mm-hmm. office. We've, we've done that. But to God be all the glory. Yeah. Without him, I couldn't have done anything. But through him, I can do all things. Mm. You know, I just came back from my biannual plan and pray. You allow me to get away every six months and kind of put myself in an Airbnb and just get strategy and hear from the Lord and just spend time in prayer and his word. And um, we're well, kind of we're in a season of success right now mm-hmm. after overcoming cancer and a season of attack and battle and hardship and brokenness. God has us in a season of fruitfulness and yeah. to every time there's a season under the heavens. And so uh, right now we're celebrating you being two years cancer free. Praise God for that. Um, I actually got a green light to start flipping houses again and kind mm-hmm. of invest not a whole lot, maybe one or two a year, three a year, something like that. Um, and after 15 years, because before I was a pastor, I was a real estate investor. I said, no, for 15 years, I yeah. just focused on the gospel. Now God's like, okay, here, go have some fun. And so I, I just did one and, you know, made a good amount of money, felt success about that. Mm-hmm. Our podcast is doing well. We're reaching people around the world. We're seeing Muslim people in different nations listening to our podcast. It's just been an amazing thing. We're on 250 million possible households in Russia and Ukraine. God's doing some amazing things. And I had this thought and, I, and, and this was the thought. Well, my wife is cancer free because we went through surgery, six months of chemotherapy, and 30 rounds of Mm -hmm. radiation. I had this thought, and the Mm -hmm. thought was, um, the reason that you uh, made success and made money flipping that that first house you did is because you worked hard and you went out and you got the wholesaler, and you got the hard money lender, and you negotiated a deal, and you figured out what to do. I had this thought. God said it would come. I had this thought that the reason your podcast is good because you was trying to put this social media stuff together for six years, but now you hired the right people and you're putting it out in the right way and you learned the algorithm and you did all of this. And when I had those thoughts, it scared me. Mm. I had those thoughts because the Bible says pride's going to come, especially when you have some yep. success. Yep. And it scared me enough to be like, oh my God, whatever those thoughts are, I want absolutely nothing to do with it to you and to you alone mm-hmm. be all the glory. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy to announce today that my wife is two years cancer free because of the grace of God, the goodness of of God, and he used some great doctors, but to him be all of the glory. I'm happy to announce today that we've made some money and some investment property because God showed me a property and held off everybody else and gave me great favor with every contractor and city official to be able to make and to turn a profit in a good market. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say today that our podcast is reaching people all around the world and people's marriages are being restored, but it's all because of his grace and the wisdom that he's given me. And all I'm doing here is I'm not that smart. I'm not that good. I'm simply just paying forward what Jesus has done for me on the cross to him be all of the glory. And I just feel like if we can have a human Humility movement mm-hmm. where people say, Not unto me, O Lord, not unto me. I don't want any of your glory. Mm-hmm. I want to get, I learned years ago, my pastor used to teach us three G's you don't touch. You never touch God's gold, you never touch his girls or his guys, and you never touch his glory. Those are the three things throughout the Bible and wow. the Old Testament. You will see people shipwreck their life when they have an improper, improper, um, relationship with gold or the opposite sex and for some same sex and also touching his glory. I don't Mm -hmm. want the glory. And so God, we give you all the glory. And so let's pray for people today, Mm y'all. This was probably the longest podcast that we've done, but hopefully the most beneficial. And we want to hear your feedback on this Mm -hmm. one because pride is common. Why is it common? We live in an information age. And so the Bible says that knowledge puffs up. So the more articles you read, the more podcasts you listen to, the more degrees you have, the smarter you think you are. Mm. Pride puffs up and pride brings low. And so you can either humble yourself or be humbled. I don't know. I'm smart enough to humble myself. Absolutely. God, to you be all the glory. Help us, Lord. Yeah. So can you just pray for the people that are watching? Um, can you guys make this commitment wherever you are? If you want to renounce pride, can you just say this with us? Say, in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I renounce. I renounce the spirit of pride. The spirit of pride. The mindset of pride. The mindset of pride. The perspective of pride. The perspective of pride. Pride? Pride? I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want anything to do. You got to go. You got to go. Lord. Lord. Give me a pure heart. Give me a pure heart. Give me clean hands. Give me clean hands. Humility. Humility. Is my portion. Is my portion. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm. You good with that? I'm good with that. You don't that. need to I pray. I think that was good. You pray for yourself. <laughs> 
We're out of time for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed our episode on today. I know that we enjoyed sharing it with you. If you're new to our podcast, hit the subscribe button, download, be a part of our family. We're going to keep sharing with you anything that God gives us, and hopefully that you'll grow closer to each other and also closer to God at the same time. Would love to invite you to a live conference this year. It will make a mark in your life. I believe you'll meet Jesus in a new way, in a profound way. We've built this conference just for people like you. No matter where you are in this world, come to Orlando, get a plane ticket, get a hotel. It's happening the second week of October. Of course, you can find more information by going to our website in the show notes. And just if this has been a blessing to you, make sure you like it, share it, commenting, comment on it. That helps us reach more people. And so until next week, thank you so much for doing life with Ken and Tabitha. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.